Welcome to this tutorial on how to digitally draw a nose. I'm going to start off with doing some loose sketches of noses from reference while giving you some generic tips. And then I'm going to move on and talk a little bit about nose anatomy, planes and lighting. And lastly, I'm going to render a nose and speak about the digital side of drawing slash painting a nose. Okay, so let's get started. Here I'm going to sketch out some noses based on these reference photos that I collected and I'm going to start with this one from a photo I found on DeviantArt. You can also see that I have already drawn some shapes in the top right corner of my digital canvas and I will tell you why I put these shapes here in a moment but I just wanted to zoom out and explain that I purposely started this lesson without going into nose anatomy or planes and all that complicated th stuff because observational drawing is what I find most useful in learning how to draw something and in this case we're learning how to draw a nose. So the first thing we need to know about noses is that they vary depending on the type of the nose and what angle they're positioned in. So if you learn to draw a nose in front view, that doesn't mean you can draw a nose from side view or three quarter view. And that's why when choosing reference photos to observe and study, you should have a variety of them. Some initial advice I would recommend is to learn how to draw a nose from front view, side view, and three quarter view with some normal lighting coming from above. This way, if you're drawing from imagination, you'll have a visual library of some standard noses that you can call upon and use. Okay, so in case you were wondering about where I collected these reference photos from, and if you want to use them too, I'll leave some li links in the description. It's particularly useful to use reference when drawing a nose if the nose is positioned in an extreme angle, like the nose I'm drawing now. Uh, which is like a three-quarter view, but also facing upwards. And don't forget that you can also use your own nose as a reference and sit in front of a mirror and draw your nose from different angles. Anyway, enough about references. I'm going to move on to the subject of shapes. So when I start drawing a nose, I find it really helpful to see it in terms of a shape, like the shapes up here or a combination of these shapes. For the nose I'm drawing now, I use like a triangle shape for the base and like half an oval for the top part of the nose. And if you remember with this first nose I drew, which was a nose in front view facing down, I started off with a diamond type shape. And with the second nose, I drew like a triangle with a little bit of the top cut off. Sometimes I might draw the bottom of the nose uh, as an oval shape and then put a triangle or rectangle for the top part of the nose. So depending on the nose and its angle, I choose the shapes that I find most represented. The next thing I kind of notice and take into account in my next stages of drawing the nose are the planes of the nose and how the lighting affects those planes. So if, if you have no idea what I mean by planes, then I would watch the next part of this tutorial and come back to this. So I try to see the main planes in my mind and sometimes if the light change between the two planes is very clear, then I might draw a line to show this change of plane. This mostly happens between the top planes of the nose and the bottom planes of the nose where the nostrils are, like this line here. After I kind of take a look at the planes of the nose, I start drawing in the areas that are the darkest and normally these are the nostrils, the outer edges of the nose where the wings are and the bottom planes of the nose where the nostrils are and sometimes the planes between the eyebrow and the corner of the eye. Of course, these may change depending on where the light is coming from. Let me just say that if you are starting a drawing of a nose from your imagination and don't have clarity on where the light is coming from, then you will probably get confused and spend a lot of time trying to figure out what doesn't look right with your nose. Unless, of course, you're just doing line art. So make sure that you have a clear point where the light is coming from. 
Anyway, then I continue to add some shading to the other parts of the nose that I have find to have sort of a mid-tone gradient. Usually that's the sides of the nose. And then I work lighter and lighter and don't add any shading to the areas I find the lightest. Usually the tip and bridge of the nose. Sometimes I may need to go back to the areas that are the darkest and re-emphasize them and make them even darker. Here I just wanted to take a side note and talk about how I get the lighter shading and how I get the darker shading. And this is where the brush you use for sketching comes into play. For these sketches, I'm using my favorite brush, which I will leave a link to in the description. With this brush, it works sort of like a traditional pencil on paper. And if I change the flow of it, then I can get it to make very soft shading or very dark shading depending on the value I choose. So if I have it at a flow of 2%, I get soft shading. And if I have it on a flow of 30%, then I get dark shading. And I keep changing the flow depending on the level of darkness I'm going for. When doing sketches of noses like this digitally, I believe it's really important to have a brush that works for you and inspires you to make some sketches because if you sit down and do full paintings of noses, it's going to take you longer to improve. So sketching some noses is a really good idea and having a good brush to do those sketches, uh, I think it's really important. You could also sketch traditionally if that works best for you, but if you want to get more comfortable with digital drawing then having a good sketching brush will help you with doing studies like this so invest a bit of time to find a brush you feel works for you and inspires you to do some sketches you don't have to use the brush I'm using experiment and find brushes that work for you another thing when sketching noses that you need to be thinking about is those hard and soft edges here you can see a hard edge and here you can see a soft edge also, for example, the top of the nostril is usually a hard edge and the bottom of the nostrils it has a bit of a softer edge. So when you're drawing a nose, you want to capture those soft and hard edges. I personally achieve that by once again changing the flow of my brush but also the position of it. Very much like a pencil, if I use the tip of it, I will get a very hard line but if I use the side of it, I get a more um, soft, thicker line. I also use my eraser to further help with creating hard and soft edges. So if I use a hard round uh, brush as my eraser, then I can get those hard edges. And if I use a soft brush, a soft round eraser brush, then I get more softer edges. Okay, so that's my general approach to sketching the nose. And I just want to emphasize that this is not rendering at the moment. This is just a quick practice uh, session where I sketch some noses that take a couple of minutes each using a technique similar to drawing with real pencil on traditional paper. I have not gone into the gritty details of the nose just yet. Also, don't forget that when drawing a nose as part of an entire face, the surroundings of the nose are also very important in getting the nose to look like a nose and getting it to stick out from the face. We will go more into this at the final part of this tutorial where I will render a nose. But I think sketching a nose first rather than attempting to fully render a nose will help you to quickly learn how to draw noses and will build your confidence to then fully render them. We will shortly move on to some anatomy and the main planes of the nose. But firstly, I will point out a few things about it and how it changes depending on the angle or type of the nose. You want to notice the nostrils as the nostrils tell us so much about the position of the nose. So if a nose is facing down like these two noses here, then the nostrils are not visible so you won't be drawing in cavities. When a nose is facing up like this one, then you see more of the nostrils. Our noses start looking a bit like a pig snout's nose when they are looking upwards. So keep in mind that the nostrils won't ever be like a perfect hole they have a bit of an overly peanut shape. In three quarter view, like here, you can see that the nostril closest to us is longer than the nostril uh, that's on the other side because it is partially hidden by the septum. Make sure to not make it thicker, but just 
longer. If a nose is inside view, like this one here, obviously only one nostril is going to be visible and the other one will be completely hidden. When it comes to the bridge of the nose, it's narrower at the top and gets wider the more you go down towards the nostrils. It's kind of like a triangle, but at the top it's cut off. And uh, also some people might have an area on their bridge that gets a bit wider, like here. I wanted to emphasize these little details as these are what gives a character a certain personality, so don't forget to capture them. The tip of the nose is also very different from one person to another. Some people have more rounder tips while others have more pointy tips. And with the rounder tips, I tend to use of a circle shape to represent it. So once you learn how to draw some different noses, you can choose elements you like into the noses that you draw and that can potentially be a part of your style. For example, I really like noses that have a little bit of an indent between the tip and the bridge of the nose just because I think it's really cute. So now we're going to go into some basic anatomy and planes of the nose and a bit of lighting. So this is one of the pictures I was using earlier as a reference photo for my sketches and I'm just going to use it and draw over it the different parts of the nose. So these are the wings of the nose and uh, this is going to be the septum of the nose. So it's really useful to know the different names of each part of the nose so when I'm referring to a certain part of the nose you know what I'm talking about and it also helps you when drawing uh, to know the names of what you're drawing. Um, so these are the nostrils. Those are obviously the two cavities that uh, is difficult for light to go in so they are the darkest usually. And that was the tip of the nose, the little circle in the middle. And now what I'm drawing is the bridge of the nose. And next I'm gonna draw uh, just some outline for the sides of the nose. I don't know really what these are called, but I call them sides of the nose. And this is the root of the nose. So that's it for some basic anatomy, and now we're going to move on to some basic planes. So once again, I'm going to draw over my picture here, and I'm going to differentiate the different planes that I visualize when I'm drawing a nose. I think about planes in terms of a surface changing angle. Just like a box has different surfaces and they're all facing a different direction, so does the nose. The only difference is the angle changes in the nose aren't as dramatic as a box. So here I'm just drawing some arrows to show where some of the planes are facing. And I just brought a picture from Google which has broken down the planes into more detail, but for me this is too complex and I don't think it's necessary to think of the planes in this complexity. So now I'm going to talk a little bit about lighting and basically lighting can come from any direction, right? Right now I'm just going to give an example of lighting coming from above. So depending on where the lighting is coming from, how the different planes of the nose are shaded will change. So lighting from above, and was one of um, the most standard, I think, light type of settings, and it's used for a lot of beauty shots. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to shade in from darkest to least darkest. If it's coming from above, the bottom planes of the nose are going to be the darkest, and then the planes between the eyebrow and uh, the, the edge of the eye, and then the sides of the nose, and then the root of the nose, and then you'll have like the bridge and the tip of the nose will be the lightest. So now I'm going to do one more lighting setup. So let's say the lighting is coming from below. Then if it's coming from below, the bridge of the nose is going to be the darkest. And then the sides of the nose are going to be the second darkest. And then we're going to work our way up to the lighter part. So then it will be the root. And we also then have the plane between the eyebrow and the tip of the eye. And lastly, we're going to have the base of the nose, which is, will be the lightest as the light is coming from below. Now I'll show you a really useful exercise you can do to practice your observation of the planes and differentiate where the surface angle changes. So you want to gather a bunch of photos like I have done here and draw over them the planes that you see. 
in the beginning it might be useful to just have like a little reference on the side with uh, the planes so that you can refer to if you get stuck but uh, once you get more comfortable i would just get rid of that and critically think where the angles of the nose changes so you can capture the different planes of the nose I'm not going to finish these as I think you get the idea and you can also search for planes of the nose on Google or Pinterest and I'm sure lots of helpful information and pictures will pop up for you that you can use to, you know, study further if you choose to. Yeah, that's it for the planes and let's move on to rendering a nose. So I've already sketched out a nose like I did earlier in the beginning of this video. I didn't think you needed to see me do that again. After that, I used the lasso tool to go around my sketch but on a different layer behind my sketch and I filled it in with like a skin tone base color. And after that, I go back to my sketch layer and I lock it so that I can, I can only draw on top of the lines that are already drawn. And I choose a darker, more saturated color, like a dark brownish color, and go over those gray blackish lines because I don't want any gray blackish lines on my drawing. Okay, so back to the base color I have chosen, uh, which is usually like around an orangey reddish color with not full saturation but like three quarters full of saturation and then what i do is on that layer with the base color that's behind my sketch i just fill in with some darker uh skin color shading and i use that by going to the normal color and like dropping down and more in saturation after that I choose also a lighter color by going higher and with less saturation as my highlight color. And then what I do is I continue to render and build up the nose by choosing darker values for the nostrils, which are the darkest part of the nose, and also the bottom part of the nose and around the wings of the nose. Also at a stage when I'm happy, I merge the sketch layer with the a layer behind it. So I've already done that here, but yeah, when you're ready and feel that it's a good time to merge it, then you can merge them and work on them as one. Now I'm just working on the highlights and getting those little details around the different areas of the tip of the nose. Also here, I just wanted to mention that if you notice, when I'm going to more detailed or more zoomed in areas, I use a smaller brush. And when I'm doing like larger areas, I'm using a bigger brush. And the brushes that I use also vary. So I'm not just using my sketch brush here, like I'm using a hard round brush, I'm using a soft round brush and some other brushes that I have. So I mix it up depending on what I'm going for. Since I'm rendering now, I'm not using any of my er erasers because if I use the eraser, then I'll just uncover the canvas behind. So I'm constantly using the color picker tool instead, and I select colors that are already existing on my nose just to bring certain things out or sync things more in by making them darker. At this stage, I keep changing things and I keep re-emphasizing different areas. It's almost like I'm sculpting with color like a sculptor would use his clay, but I'm just doing it on a 2D surface with color instead of clay. For example, if I wanted to make the tip uh, larger, then I would use that highlight color and make a bigger, rounder, sh bubbleless shape at the top. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is it's lacking some color, like the nose has some redness to it. So I'm going to go over it a little bit with a soft brush and just add some of that uh, redness. There's other ways to do this too, like using um, selective color or using the lasso tool or adding um, a different layer above and changing it to color mode instead and then adding some redness. But this is just how I chose to do it right now because that felt right to me. Don't be afraid to use your own methods though and just experiment and see what works for you at the given moment. Like other times I might use the lasso tool instead or add a new layer and change the color mode. It just depends on what I'm feeling. 
I've extended the skin base a little bit so I can also work on a little bit of the areas around the nose. So now I'll just work on that area between the eyebrow and the edge of the nose which has like a bit of darkness to them if the lighting's coming from above. And what this does is help re-emphasize the actual nose to stick out from the face. And I'm going to just blend those in so it's obviously attaching to the nose and not a separate element as everything in the face is connected. Once that's done, then you know you might see that you need to further re-emphasize some areas of the nose to help it stick out even more. So I add that little highlight at the tip of the nose and a little highlight on the bridge of the nose to just push it out of the face. Once that's done, then I also add some shading at the bottom of the nose. It's darker at the top where the nostrils are and as it goes down it gets lighter. So that shadow, it like tapers away. And what also helps me emphasize the nose is that area between where the wings end and the face. So when I add a little bit of lightness to those, it helps the nose to stick out even further. By the way, in these areas here, I've also added like a bit of a grayish desaturated color. I just chose my base color and I moved it towards a lighter and a de more desaturated tone. And this adds a bit more realism to the nose. So now I've opened my liquify tool and you can open up your liquify tool in any stage and you can change a little bit the proportions of the nose if you like or if something doesn't look right. I'm totally pro using, you know, the liquify tool or transform tools to quickly make changes that, you know, could have taken you much longer to do if you aren't using those tools. The nose is pretty much done now. I'm just messing about a bit and changing some minor details. So we're almost at the end of this tutorial. This is how I draw a nose and this is my current style. So obviously it always changes a bit from time to time. Sometimes I might discover something new and then I'll change the way I approach it. Don't take my word for everything. I'm still learning as well. Uh, but this is how I currently draw a nose. I hope you find it, found it helpful and that, you know, this has been a beneficial tutorial for you. Um, I know when I was starting out, I watched loads of these types of tutorials and they really helped me. So hopefully this helps you. I have also drawn a nose from three quarter view and side view. So here's the three quarter view and here's the side view one, but I didn't have time to show these as well because then this tutorial would be really long. Some final adjustments that I do with my drawings and these noses is basically I mess about with the saturation by clicking Control U on my keyboard and I also mess about with the contrast and the brightness. So I'm just going to do these individual for each of these three noses just to make them pop and like bring out some of those colors because my work I try to make it really colorful and that's why I also didn't want to draw a nose in grayscale like many other tutorials out there. I think it's important to dive into color from the beginning even if you're still not that confident because that's how you're going to learn how to use color. We're at the end of the tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe to support my channel. All right. Thanks so much. Bye everyone.